Another Keeping Him Honest report tonight. This one from Capitol Hill involves one of the most powerful Democratic congressmen who today walked out of his own ethics trial. Congressman Charlie Rangel is accused of 13 ethics violations, as you probably know. They're laid out in 108 pages that were released in July by the House Committee on Standards of Official Conduct Investigative Subcommittee. The charges, including uh, failing to pay taxes on this home in the Dominican Republic, misuse of a Harlem rent control department as a political office, and improper use of letterhead and use of government mail service. Now, the charges follow a nearly two-year investigation that involved the sworn testimony of nearly 50 witnesses over 28,000 pages of documents. Now, since day one, Congressman Rangel has deflected blame and basically made excuses. Take a look. Nobody that can read is going to bring any charges against me. I plead guilty of not being sensitive. These wild allegations, just because a report of the New York Times has a problem with me, there has to be a penalty for grabbing the wrong stationery. Unfair and inaccurate reports in the press. Uh, every time I thought I was getting through, they started talking Spanish. It's in the minds of some reporters who are looking for a Pulitzer Prize out of this. I have not been able to explain my position ever. I guess it's all selling papers. So now with the, his ethics trial underway, there's a new excuse. Mr. Rangel says he doesn't have a lawyer. Mr. Rangel says he's already spent roughly $2 million on campaign funds on a high-priced legal team, but when they suggested it might cost another million, and he says he couldn't pay it, he says they quit. That was more than a month ago. Today, he said he needs more time. Madam Chair, all I'm asking for is the time to get counsel. I have lawyers from Washington, D.C. and New York are willing to give me free counsel to be able to come here because they don't think I've been treated fairly, and yet... They say that if they do that, it's a gift and violates all of the laws. Well, he's right about that. It would be a violation of ethics rules for him to accept free legal advice. But he has had plenty of time to begin a legal defense fund. Mr. Rangel insisted today he's being denied due process. I am being denied the right to have a lawyer right now because I don't have the opportunity to have a legal defense fund set up. And because I can't afford another million dollars. You may hire whoever you wish uh, as a lawyer. That is up to you. So listen to what Mr. Rangel said there. He said he didn't have the opportunity to have a legal defense fund set up. But that's not true. Mr. Rangel has had plenty of time and opportunity to set up a legal defense fund. How come he hasn't? Well, Mr. Rangel says he just recently found out it was an option, implying he didn't know he could start a legal defense fund before that. Keep him honest. That is hard to believe. I mean, it's not like he's never heard of the idea. We all know of politicians who've set up legal defense funds. Mr. Rangel has known, himself has known plenty of politicians with legal defense funds. Longtime political tradition. Bill Clinton had one. Sarah Palin had one. Even Congresswoman Maxine Waters has one right now. She's facing an ethics trial this month, too. She just started her legal defense fund back around Labor Day. Hard to believe that no one on Mr. Rangel's crack legal or political team ever suggested a legal defense fund be created sometime in the last two years. It's hard to believe that Mr. Rangel himself never thought about it in the entire two years he was being investigated. By the way, that wasn't the only excuse Charlie Rangel gave today. He also says that the agenda at this hearing, a hearing he's known about for weeks, came as a big surprise. That seemed to come as a big surprise to the prosecutor, who said that Mr. Rangel had been kept in the loop every step of the way and that changes had even been made to accommodate some of his objections. Throughout the course of preparation in recent days, uh, we've entered into, uh, well, witnesses have offered affidavits. The respondent was given notice of those. He was provided copies and, in fact, in at least one of these instance, instances, suggested changes to the language which we negotiated and which we agreed to. That guy is a Blake Chisholm. That's his name. He's the chief counsel for the committee. Now, before he got a chance to share that, Congressman Rangel had already walked out of the ethics trial. Take a look. Here's the exit. Congressman Rangel, always a politician, while leaving his own trial. Watch this. He makes sure to give committee members handshakes. Trial went on today without him. Oh, one more thing. Mr. Rangel insisted he didn't have a lawyer, right? Well, take a look at this. As Congressman Rangel walked out of today's hearings, he was with a man, that, that guy we've circled there, named Abe Lowell, who just happens to be a high-profile, I'm uh, sorry, Abby Lowell, 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 he just happens to be a high-profile Washington attorney. Mr. Lowell ended up sitting behind Congressman Rangel today in the first row and left when he left. Lowell's the kind of attorney who's used to defending politicians under investigation. He's represented former Congressman Gary Condit, lobbyist Jack Abramoff, among others. So we got in touch with Rangel's office. They tell us Mr. Lowell is a longtime friend and supporter of the congressman, and Congressman Rangel continues to remain without counsel, that he was just there as a friend. 
Melanie Sloan, executive director of Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, is questioning Lowell's presence, among other things. She joins us along with uh, CNN political analyst Roland Martin. And back with us again is uh, Eric Erickson. Melanie, uh, I mentioned the attorney there, Mr. Lowell, was with the Congressman Rangel today, but not formally representing him. You, you say the Congressman could possibly be committing an ethics violation during his ethics trial. How so? Well, that's right. If Mr. Lowell was representing him, and, and let's just understand this. I mean, is Mr. Lowell and our Mr. Rangel, are they both saying that Abby Lowell just happened to walk by the ethics committee room and just happened to walk in when Mr. Rangel was having his hearing and then just happened to sit in a reserved seat and walk out with the congressman and guide reporters? That seems really unlikely. It seems like Mr. Lowell was, in fact, providing legal advice to Mr. Rangel. But can he Ms be there as a friend? He certainly could be there as a friend, but uh, given Mr. Lowell's well-known position as a prominent legal defense fund who handles exactly these kind of matters, that just doesn't seem all that likely in these circumstances. Roland, does it pass the smell test to you for Charlie Rangel to claim that he didn't know he could set up a legal defense fund? Well, certainly he had time to set up a legal defense fund. Uh, one of the so look, I, mean, I don't understand why that wasn't set up, uh, but also recognize he was paying for. Uh, his defense out of uh, campaign funds had a significant war chest, but obviously that came down. Now, the, the, what really jumps out is the fact that uh, the legal team withdrew from the case. Uh, it was not clear, based upon the, today's evidence, that they actually uh, left Rangel's camp. Now, the law firm, a Washington, D.C. law firm, later released their own statement by saying it was not their choice. And so, you know, again, that's being, you know, so we're trying to figure out, you know, really what's going Going on here, I think that's something that's critical to understand. Why did his legal le legal team, and he's already paid two million dollars, not follow through and be the attorneys of record and withdrew from the case? Eric, it does seem kind of questionable that the, that the, his lawyers would say, "Oh well, you we've, you paid us two million dollars. Uh, we think this this thing may cost another million, which is what Rangel is claiming he was told by one of them, uh, and therefore we're just gonna." We're going to quit. Do you buy this? No. And in, in fact, in cases like that, the lawyers can't quit. I've been in situations like that when I was practicing law, and you can't just up and quit. Uh, you, you've got to tell the the judge. In this case, you've got to tell the House Ethics, Ethics Committee. I would imagine saying no. uh, this this is the situation. Actually, not actually, actually not, not true. true. Actually, <laughs> not, that's not, not true, Anderson. No. Anderson. Anderson. Okay, go ahead. Anderson, the problem. Go ahead. Melanie, go ahead. I'm sorry. That, that's not actually accurate. Uh, that certainly would be. Eric's right. In the case of a, a trial, uh, lawyers right. would never be permitted to withdraw from right. representation shortly before trial. But the House Ethics Committee, you don't have the same right to counsel that you do, uh, right. that Americans assume you have in, in front of the Ethics Committee. And certainly they could withdraw. And as my understanding is, there is a dispute about money. And it, it was a problem mm -hmm. that they withdrew right before the trial. But that said, it's also a problem that Mr. Rangel isn't permitted to have pro bono counsel uh, under House rules, gift rules, he would be banned from having pro bono lawyers. So they're sort of in a rock and a hard place. But that said, when Mr. Rangel got up today and started asserting that he was counselless and this was all unfair and, and he hadn't been prepared, I mean, that really wasn't true. Mr. Rangel knew what was coming. He's known for two years. He had ample time to reach a plea deal with the committee, uh, you know, a year it, it and also, a half ago. It also seems to me, Eric, that if you're you know, you've got a, a, a huge legal team, which you're paying, right. it's a top flight legal team. You're paying them, okay, he, say, if Charlie Rangel's correct, he's paid them $2 million over two years. You, you get a sense your funds are running low. Right. Charlie Rangel knows he can start a legal defense fund. It's the most common thing. I mean, everyone knows well, you can do this. Maybe that's why Abby Lowell was there today, to, to, to let him know he could. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's insane that if he was paying this amount of money, and it, it's good to know that the lawyers can, can drop him like that in these situations, but he should have known that as well, given his background. And I would be hard-pressed to imagine that a lawyer in a situation like that would not explain to him that he could set up a legal defense I mean, the whole thing justifies uh, his Eric, is there a political reason and, and he, so might, he might want to just try to run the clock? out. I mean, oh, is there a political, yeah, but, do you think well, he's just trying to buy time? Well, yeah, I, I think he's probably trying to buy time as well. And there's a report that just came out a, a few minutes ago that he's thinking he wants to be the ranking member on Ways and Means Committee again, and maybe wants to put this off a little further to, to try to vie for that. Uh, there are plenty of political reasons. It's it just the whole thing that was becoming an embarrassment. Well, I think today yeah, well, what well, also well, happened... Well, well, here's, here's what Anderson, here's what we're facing. The committee has already concluded, frankly, and so they've gone into their secret del deliberations as it relates to this. That's first. Uh, second of all, you have the staff attorney who has said, he's been quoted, I read the story on Politico, where he was quoted as saying to the committee that he does not believe that corruption is evident. He also said it is not clear that the, that the, that the uh, uh, congressman personally benefited financially from this. Uh, and so the question 
then becomes what is going to be the ruling of this committee. Okay. And so is it a, this is this is not like Ted Stevens where there's a federal trial of corruption compared to what the House but, Ethics but Committee is doing. Melanie, to, to Roland's point, and, and he's right, the prosecutor did say that. I don't understand that because I mean, to me, you know, if you're if you have rent-controlled apartments that are supposed to go to you know people without means in, in New York City, and you have three of them under your name or under your son's name. Whether that's, you know, directly financially, you're doing it because you want to use those apartments for whatever purposes, that seems corrupt to me. I mean, wh why, why well, is everyone jumping through a hoop saying this isn't corruption, this isn't corruption, it's just sloppy record keeping? If, you, if you're using rent-controlled apartments not for the intent that they're supposed to be, that seems kind of sleazy. Well, the prosecutor did say he wasn't sure whether Mr. Rangel had a personal financial benefit. He said he wouldn't call it corruption, but there might be a personal financial benefit. But what is compelling here and what is abundantly clear is that Mr. Rangel committed all of these violations. And what the committee did do today is come back and say all of the facts that are out there, they're correct. And we know that Mr. Rangel did commit all of these violations. He committed all of the acts that were alleged. Now the only question left for the committee is whether those acts that have been alleged do they violate House rules and federal law? And it's my bet that quite promptly the committee's going to come back and find that, yes, indeed, they do violate rules and law. And the next question well, the will be what kind of penalty is there for we're, Mr. We're, Rangel? We're, we're, right. Again, the committee has to rule versus, again, convicting him already. And so you have the staff report that was presented uh, and them, them laying that out. Now the, the, the deliberations are taking place. That's what we'll actually find out. Uh, so it's not like he's guilty of this. It's based upon their ruling. This stunt isn't going to help him, though, with the committee that's going to put them in a rock and a hard place. They don't want to look like they, they've bowed down or folded because of Charlie Rangel's stunts. Uh, it was a fascinating day. Uh, Roland Martin, Eric Erickson, Melanie Sloan, thank you all. Appreciate it.